<laughs> Welcome everybody to our Jog and Boff. This year is EGRAF 2012. And um, I have the honor to uh, present the whole team here we have. This is uh, Xerxes Ranby, and this is uh, Julian Gosset, and this is uh, Rami Santina, and this is Wade Walker. So this is part of our community. And um, yeah, and everybody of us likes to uh, show you some of our work. So our session will be split in two segments. The first segment will be showing you some demonstrations and a little introduction of Joggle, Joggle, the architecture, but very briefly. The second part should actually take into account that this is a buff, meaning interaction. So we ask you to uh, tell us what uh, you would like to hear. And maybe, thank you, Rami. You can take one. Um, <laughs> okay. okay, so our um, Okay, so our objectives actually are to um, expose um, multimedia APIs um, processing 3D uh, audio, video, etc. Um, on multiple devices um, under the same API. So the API, uh, the umbrella is JOGM, and then we have modules Joggle, JoCL, JoAL, etc. And the goal is um, to utilize this API um, to write a, let's say, controller-like Java application, which runs on many devices, um, embedded as well, and to let the, for example, the hardware do the hard work, like 3D video decoders, processing for JoCL, etc. Okay, about us. So we have a uh, yeah, little history, like in the very past, uh, we had something like gl for java and that was open source. Then at, at some ecosystem we worked at Jogal, and now uh, we work under the umbrella of Jogim. Um So we are open and vendor independent. Um, our code is uh, BSD compatible, the license. Um, so we have uh, uh, our high performance bindings, meaning um, delegation of the uh, jobs to the hardware. And we have a one-stop community platform, meaning we have a source code repository, bug tracking, build server, mailing list, forum, etc. So the demo you just have seen uh, before we started comes from Dominic Stroiler, known as a Demo Scene Pacifist. So he is the uh, winner of this year, revision uh, 2012, of the 4K uh, entry, meaning the demo uh, must be done completed in 4096 bytes. So this demo was uh, not done with Java, because they don't allow it yet. However, um, for this development cycle, and uh, also all these all this demos are available using Joggle, on the website as well. You can see them all on YouTube. Um, yeah. So the visuals in a nutshell. So sorry, Dominic couldn't make it here. So he has to work while we have fun. And uh, so the implementation, uh, uh, it's quite odd. So it doesn't run on mobile devices very well. It's, uh, it's one fragment shaker, uh, which uh, does everything in one loop. Uh, looping through, creating fractals, and all that stuff. So I don't really understand it. And um, yeah, so here you go, and uh, uh, you can read it uh, better on his website. Have we shown his website already? It was in the previous picture, right? So this is his website, copymasterresearchtumble.com. And also when you go on jogam.org, and you go on our blogs and streams, uh, you will find his uh, content. So, like last year, we showed that, that our stuff is uh, working on Android as well. Now I have to hold the microphone, the mobile device, and try to switch to the USB webcam. Okay, so, so we have put in um, uh, an abstract layer to, to, to the media player. So here we are using uh, 
the uh, OMX library uh, exposed to uh, right. Yeah, that works too. <laughs> <laughs> Done. <laughs> Always hard to do this. <laughs> uh, okay, Bunny is uh, getting up. Good. <laughs> so okay, so it's working. So on Linux, we use uh, the F the libav ffmpeg library, and uh, well, on other platforms, we still have to do greater binding to that. Um, the goal is uh, to have video output like decoding and encoding. The sad thing is because we are no lawyers, we cannot you know uh, distribute. <laughs> AV and etc. So we try just to pick up whatever is installed and try to use it. Uh, so this works on uh, Android 4.0 because they expose the, the uh, native uh, codec library. Uh, so sadly not, not on older devices. Yeah, okay, that's enough. And now I'd like to introduce uh, you to Julian. Uh, Julian um, uh, takes the effort to port engines like Java 3D, Ada 3D, etc., over to uh, uh, to use Joggle, and um, yeah, so here it is. Uh, hi, uh, Sweet Home 3D is a software allowing you to uh, to design your 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 room. Uh, it relies on Java 3D. Um, Okay. Um, in the bottom, in the bottom right corner, you can see uh, you can see an example of uh, Canva relying on uh, Java 3D. Uh, by default, we have selected uh, the back end relying on Joggle. So it's so it's running thanks to Joggle. Uh, uh, this is a, a swing uh, swing based application, and uh, th this is one of the strong points. The, the, the advantage of uh, the JOGAMP and particularly uh, JOGL, the nice uh, and reliable interoperability between uh, AWT, Swing, and uh, the, our hardware acceleration signal. Okay. Um, Nifty Degree is a very lightweight library. Uh, used to uh, create custom uh, custom uh, uh, UI elements, uh, it's not it's not a replacement of existing libraries. It's really uh, a nice uh, U UI library to create your own your, your own uh, widgets very very quickly. Uh, you, you you can use uh, XML code to uh, to extend the, the existing. Uh, a set of uh, widgets, or you can do the same by using the the, the builders in uh, directly in Java. If you if you don't really like using XML, so you have the choice. So this is a drag and drop. Put it there. Okay. If it stops okay. So the. There are some uh, some uh, usual uh, uh, UI elements, but it's not the main aim. This uh, this library is very nice uh, for games when you need to to uh, create something unique. You know, uh, it's the, the the UI in a game is a part of its identity. You uh, if you use plain swing without uh, skin, without any uh, customization, it, it, it there's a lack of soul of of taste. You, you see what I mean? So it's, uh, I, I advise to use this library maybe for uh, mainly for gaming, not for, for not, not really for scientific or visualization. Uh, not when uh, the, the the end users expect uh, something that he already knows. Uh, this last demo is uh, my my first person shooter. Uh, so keep it in mind, I'm not an artist, so it's <laughs> absolutely ugly. It's not the aim of of uh, the, this application, it's mainly a, a tech, see, see that as a tech demo, uh, my, my main concern is performance, uh, uh, I'm, I'm not, I feel, uh, I don't feel com comfortable with modeling software like Blender, so uh, I, I reuse uh, existing uh, artworks, 
uh, this texture that has, has been created by uh, Vincent, uh, Vincent uh, Stahl, uh, uh, a German artist. So maybe I can run it now? Okay. Uh, and sorry, we have not s no sound, so you will probably uh, you will you won't hear anything. But it's using J O J O A L for the sound. Okay. No sound. uses our work to create 2D fabric. Uh, instead, I will talk about the Raspberry Pi. It's a small computer, and um, it's available to children who want to learn how to program. And uh, you get a really small board that you can attach to the home TV and a, a keyboard. Um, when most people experience a the Raspberry Pi, they notice that it's very hard to access the hardware. Actually, the hardware the only way to access the GPU, the fast uh, drawing graphics, is to go, go use um, the Chromos group, groups and libraries. Unfortunately, the Pi needs custom custom uh, initialization, so you cannot just use it out of the box. So what we've done is that we have written a new to driver, and this is sort of an abstraction layer on top of Yogan. Yogan has the driver framework, so we can extend Yoga to run on many new different platforms. Uh, and so um, this demonstration I'm going to do now is much focused on OpenGL ES, and it's the embedded OpenGL. So it can be used um, in small portable devices. Um, so, for example, this is my daughter that's uh, creating um, programs in processing. Uh, processing is a library that uses Yogam for 3D acceleration. So, and so I'm going to go back to Raspberry Pi and just show a quick demonstration that it's possible to use Yogam to get access to the 3D hardware acceleration on a new device. Inside this Lego case, there's a small circuit board. That's the computer that people can get. They can order it and get it in the mailbox for around the 30 dollars. And uh, it contains a quite old uh, processor. That's why we can keep the price down. But it's coupled with a very potent uh, graphics actuator chip that's used as uh, open ELDS. So you can connect it to a uh, HD uh, TV set and have it running full screen. So right now, we are <coughs> running one of the standard uh, yoga demonstrations, just gears using the Raspberry Pi. Uh, the Raspberry Pi does not have a, a, a default GUI toolkit like a, a X or a server. So you, you, when you start up the board, you only have a console, like a text mode. So when you're using hardware acceleration, you're actually painting on top of the text mode using the Chronos libraries. So this is using Java on a Raspberry Pi. And uh, by, by taking advantage of the hardware acceleration, you get the speed that in order to be able to create interesting things. So I'm going to show one other demonstration where we connect it to the media, media libraries. And now it will fetch a movie from our server. 
<laughs> so once again, now the moving playback goes up on the console. And, and this is also, also, so we actually do the color conversion before, between UIB space and RGB space in the pixel shader of the graphic card to speed up the process. The interesting thing that like this is the same code, for example, running on Linux with, with libav. So here on the Raspberry Pi, it's the same code, so you don't have to change anything, etc. Yeah. Yeah. So here's Jogian running on the Raspberry Pi. First time. We did that in that room you saw before. <laughs> <laughs> yes, just yesterday. Yeah, it's a twist. <laughs> okay, and here comes Rami. <laughs> okay, uh, my name is Rami Santino, I'm from CCC. We are basically a construction company and we have our own product for visual project controls of the oil and gas project while construction. So here we have C3D uh, Studio, C3D Viewer and C3D Mobile. And we utilize Joggle to, for writing our rendering engine and now we will see how it runs on uh, desktop, laptops and uh, Android devices. So C3D, uh, the basic idea of it is to connect all different uh, products that are used in construction from estimating to budgets to CAD modeling and visualize it, all the data in a uh, 3D scene. So here we have a sample use case where you're visualizing the material delivery date and uh, highlighting conflicts with the Primavera plan to see what can be done and relative to estimation. And here we see that uh, before we were generating PDF files for each foreman, that this is our, are the tasks that you should do this day. And now we are using C3D Mobile to, and you can take it on site with him, to navigate through to show it. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so the, the actual data visualization on mobile devices now uh, so that is, I mean, it should be emphasized a little bit more um, because when you when you inspect a building or a construction <clears throat> or you, you even can add data uh, with this toolkit uh, and synchronize it with the server later on. So um, this is the innovative uh, uh, yeah, element here of, of the whole idea. Um, and all this is uh, visualized with OpenGL, uh, with an OpenGL ES uh, GLSL uh, shader-based uh, renderer, and it is adaptive, uh, frame rate adaptive, so it will uh, drop, may drop some details, uh, but it won't drop the frame rate and uh, uh, responsiveness while you navigate through. This is actually a project in Qatar for oil and gas refinery. This is uh, 400 kilometers of pipelines and steel structure, and we are visualizing it here in 60 frames per second. Okay, so now we'll show the C3D mobile version. So here's C3D mobile. <laughs> it's not, no, no, yep. Again. Oh, it looks. Okay. You can see it uh, if you want in person after. <laughs> so he chooses a file. So this is actually a new uh, activities, um, sorry, Android activities. And now here you can see the scene with the model. So the interesting part here, again, is that uh, this uses the same uh, shader-based renderer. Of course, some features may not be available, but it's, same, it's still the same source code. It's using new uh, for input-output, and um, so you have uh, very little maintenance uh, for your code. You have the same code base for your product, and that's an awesome thing here. So to 
to just to complete because we have the cheese application up running. So what Julian mentioned, so last year we actually finished um, pot and graph to mobile as well. Um, Itself. So, so the nifty guy, uh, Julian showed you, um, is also rendering the user interface with uh, OpenGL. Um, so it is like AWG swing and storage device uh, independent. And this is like our experimental uh, demonstration uh, to render curves on um, on the GPU. So rendering curves means you can render the two type files, etc., etc. So this is like what we. Uh, back in the days, did uh, here with Ken and uh, and others with the Rublin method, which is patented. So this now is not patented. Uh, Tiarami found a, he's a good mathematician, so he found a good way uh, around it and uh, wrote a paper about it, uh, which he presented in Moscow. Uh, Moscow. In Moscow. Okay, in 2011. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. So, so now two times we have mentioned Russia here. <laughs> Okay, what's next? Next is weight. So now it's getting academic here. So uh, this is actually a non-planned transition, but you know, it always works out. All right, am I mic'd? Excellent. Hey guys, this is a, a bit different application from what the other guys are doing. Yeah, I work at ARM, the British microprocessor company, during the daytime. And Previously, we've used Juggle to make internal engineering tools that allow us to do standard cell you know, placement and uh, tiling. But I can't show you that tool because it's a secret internal tool. But it was kind of similar to what Rami was showing a minute ago, where we used you know, the power of Juggle to write Java apps that do advanced 3D graphics and be able to scroll around and see things. But uh, in my private life, I do physics research at night, and just for fun. <laughs> and so I've been using Juggle to do like scientific computing, essentially. I'll show you just a real short demo of that. When do you sleep? When do I sleep? Uh, well, not as much as I ought to, probably. <laughs> okay, so I'm working on computational fluid dynamics, elastodynamics, and soliton formation, but I won't go into details about all that stuff. Yeah, the basis is that it's a field of computational physics that requires a lot of coding, and you can have an animated graphical display that you can interact with so that you can develop these algorithms. When you're doing research, I guess, you don't start out with an algorithm that you already know how you're going to implement it. You have to sort of do a little bit and then test it and do something else and test that. So in that situation, you know, Juggle is very handy. I just got this paper published about the topic in PLOS One. In case anybody wants to go read an exciting paper about uh, the physics of fluid dynamics. But in my case, uh, since this is exploratory code, it's not production code, it's always being changed. So I've got to have like flexibility to move things around. So I program it in Java, so I don't have to worry about the garbage collection aspect. The data structures involved are very uh, complex and linked together. It's difficult to get all the garbage you know, disposal aspects of it right manually. So I can just let Java worry about that for me. And uh, it's an Eclipse RCP application, which lets you build sort of a workbench-y you know, programming GUI sort of app really easily. And then embedded inside of that, I render the graphics using Java OpenGL. It's easy to do. It's essentially just like writing normal OpenGL code, you know, which I was already familiar with, and uh, cross-platform as well, which is important to a lot of scientific types. It's going to be able to run on Mac, Linux, and PC at least, unaltered. It can't run on mobile because it requires too much processing power, but uh, I can run the exact same application across desktop platforms without changing any of the code. And then it's uh, supported, of course, by a bunch of great guys sitting in front of you. Yeah, this is a static screenshot of what it looks like, but I'll show you a live demo right now. Assuming that it cooperates. Yeah, I've never tried to demonstrate this thing live before. Let's see if it works. OK, here we go. Yes, slightly cut off on the edges. Hold on a sec, let me shrink it. Oops. <laughs> Shrinks it. And clicking on the wrong button. Okay, click this one. Wait, not that one. Shrink it the old fashioned way. Still too wide. Hang on a second. 
And the view that it's showing me on my screen here is a different number of pixels than the one that you're looking at on the monitor. Uh, here it is. That's all on screen. Yeah, this is an Eclipse RCP application. And what you're seeing here, if I get it all visible, is uh, the variables of my fluid flow. This is the density on top. This is velocity. And then the bottom one is the pressure. So you can see that here on the left side, the density, velocity, and pressure are all high. Over here, it's low. And that thick black line on the top is the analytical solution that you get by solving equations in the old-fashioned way with math. And when you run the simulator, it's interactively going in and subdividing this fluid into tiny little pieces that are represented by these little colored stripes. And then uh, rendering my solution superimposed on the black one. If I use the power of juggle to move in, I can you know, scroll these graphics around. I can zoom in and out interactively. You know, it's a lot nicer way to do you know, what's essentially 2D graphics using the 3D accelerator, because then even if you've got like hundreds of thousands of polygons, you can easily scroll it around and zoom in and out, use all the features that you're used to in hardware acceleration. But if you program this with some 2D API, it would be much slower and more painful. Then uh, you can click on individual elements inside of the graph see their different property values you know, in this interface. And you know, this shows me all the information I need to know when I'm debugging the algorithm. I can click around and then check it out. So it's a nice programming environment for this kind of exploratory scientific coding. Let's see, back to the presentation. I'm really surprised this is working. <laughs> yeah. And that's pretty much the end of it. It's very short. That's sort of a different application than uh, what the other guys are doing. But just to demonstrate that Juggle is good for all different kinds of stuff. Oh, okay, that's it. <clears throat> Tall enough, eh? <laughs> so, um, as Wayne already mentioned, and Xexus, and I mean, as you might already know, um, so we can go hopefully to this, these slides pretty quickly. Um, why we use Java, we have multiple vendors. Xaxis is actually uh, a huge contributor to the IST team uh, in regards to uh, mobile embedded devices as well as that uh, IST plugin, right? Yeah. And um, yeah, so you, you know, you have the, the proprietary Oracle JDK and other JDKs, JVMs, I mean, etc. So uh, processors, Intel, ARM, PowerPC, uh, Super H, uh, usually, somehow, they have a Java we have available. Um, yeah. And then we support GNU Linux, Android, well, that's Linux too, so uh, BSD, Mac OS, and uh, Zolaris of Indiana, and like, uh, oh, Windows too. <laughs> right, <laughs> it's cut off here. Okay. So, okay, why, why is that cool? Uh, it's a managed code. So, like back in the days, 1995, we had a huge problem. Like, for example, with the transition, like when Sex has mentioned OpenGLES, he meant OpenGLES 2. So, um, if you know the fixed function pipeline code uh, FFP, then OpenGL or OpenGLES 1, it was easy for you, or you thought it was easy, to maintain thousands of states and, and uh, rotation matrices, and you know, you just write your graphics in immediate mode code. And then OpenGLES 2 came, uh, you know, appeared, and then you were looking for all these functions, and you know, nothing is there. So, um, what we also provide for OpenGLES 2 is an emulation, as well as as utilities like the PMV matrix. Uh, so, so we provide all these tools for you, also uh, memory and shader code, shader state, shader code management. Um, so all this, all these demos usually you see here, they utilize that, so it shrinks the code. So Xaxas actually went through the uh, burden of uh, writing uh, the, the one demo triangle, or was it triangle, yeah, just a triangle in plain uh, Java code just using OpenGL, so we had to deal with, you know, with everything, um, and that's usually the reason why you don't want to use OpenGL as too. So, um, Compared to the managed code, like I mean, you could, like you can shrink the code uh, like ten times or something. Yeah, right. um, okay, so then you have the, the pipelining, the debugging, and trace. Like, oh, your OpenGL application crashes, or you don't see anything on the screen. You just enable a, a property, and then uh, a pipeline object is being used, uh, checking the OpenGL state. Um, yeah, and then I mean Java. So it's not just 
that you have lots of APIs available, like as Rami said, like you, I mean, this is not just a 3D application, it is, it is uh, attached to a database, uh, the C3D application uh, is parsing XML, etc. But uh, Xex has also mentioned, like, actually, this is not a Java binding, this is a binding to the JVM. So you can use Python and other language bindings to the JVM as well. I could just skip this. So another whirlwind, they may move over to Joggle tool, it's undecided yet. So another whirlwind is. Is, is a good example actually, in my opinion, how you don't do it. So you create a second code base for an Android OpenGL ES2 uh, renderer, and uh, where you just could use Doggle and uh, have one renderer for desktop and for uh, mobile devices. So the uh, continuity and maturity, um, yeah, so we had a version one uh, back in the days, now we had version two. Uh, offering op the OpenGL profiles, so uh, you can create uh, create your OpenGL context uh, as compatible with desktop and mobile, if you wish, or you can request uh, full featured uh, OpenGL context for three and four, etc. So the window we have a windowing toolkit abstraction, and uh, with our build server, so currently we have 86 GluGen and 278 Joggle unit tests. Um, which is actually run on all the platforms we support. So support here means uh, build continuously and test it continuously. And this is all available to you online and you can see the uh, current state. And the community effort, as you see, I mean, uh, I was actually afraid that we are more here behind the uh, stage, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we, we are glad that there are a few people here. So, um, yeah. Okay, so that's, uh, yeah, and actually, so we are glad about the community effort here. Uh, that's what keeps the project alive. And if you want to deploy Jogam, so you have seen uh, the examples now on Android and on, on the uh, laptop. Um, later you will see uh, applets or JNLP, uh, uh, Java applets. Um, so the convenience here is uh, you, you can either uh, uh, you can use our uh, uh, native jar loading uh, support, which means uh, like you don't need no more uh, take care of the native libraries. So that's like a built-in feature, platform independent. Uh, you can just drop the Jogger jars in one place folder, whether it be an applet or on a computer, or whatever, and then uh, just pass the, the, the Jogger jars uh, in your class parts and you're good to go. Mark. Mark uh, lately added Maven support, so if you are a Maven or Eclipse Maven, uh, etc. developer, now you can uh, use Maven and uh, download the Joggle artifacts automatically, so that of course simplifies your development setup. Uh, yeah. And the Android APK, so the Android, uh, so I was looking actually for uh, for something like daisy chain, like what you usually do with Java applications, that you just have a class pass and put your modules into one class pass. So then I was scared that this doesn't even exist on uh, Android. So however, so I created that, like daisy chaining everything with native libraries. So you can do that. In the end, it turns out it is a burden to the user. Like you have to install three or four APKs to see uh, our infamous Gears demo. Um, however, then uh, Rami was sick of all that, and he just uh, created one end file to, uh, you know, to just jar everything together in one big fat uh, application you just have seen here. So that works too. So you can use it as you wish, uh, modularized, or uh, or you can deploy one big fat APK. Yeah, so these are the OpenGL profiles. So, so maybe we, so this is maybe the last page uh, because now we, we, we start to get into details. So the, the, the only thing, um, so that's why we made a smiling here. So that, that's one big point of, of our API. Um, if you choose the uh, desktop compatible and mobile compatible uh, profile, um, by the spec you can be safe uh, that you don't violate uh, any features. Um, so that's a big, big idea, like when you use Eclipse, you can just attach the jars, you can also attach the source code uh, zip files, uh, you get your, the, the API help, etc. And, um, and you won't use any OpenGL3 function, etc. Uh, for example. Okay. Okay. 
So this is now our local backup server here because we have no internet connection here or we have to pay lots of money and we don't want that. Okay, so this is our website here and uh, I've probably seen it or not. So uh, just demonstrating here. Oh, okay, so like, oh, I can show you a demo here of Frog but because Frog is, is cool, so the, the CERN guys, so because we are in the academic mode. Minimize. <laughs> so this is what uh, the CERN guy did. So they visualize uh, their their data collection in, in a 3D environment. And, yeah, and they use Drupal too, so they produce all these nice videos, probably to get new funding. And uh, you know, it's always cool to have nice videos. So they do this. Uh, yeah, we have two videos, two examples here, and it's open source, and uh, you can download it. You can whatever uh, collect your own high energy particle data. <laughs> So that was frog processing, right? Uh, Sex has wanted to show, but, but the, uh, could you see actually anything on the TV? Uh, yeah, awesome. So then Sex has, uh, you know, his daughter played with that tool, and Sex can do that as well. Okay, so we'll talk about the processing. Uh, it's a programming language designed for art stu students. Uh, I think it was derived from programming by numbers, and uh, the idea with processing is to add a more simplified way um, to open a screen, drawing a line. So to open a screen, you just say size, and uh, say you want 400 width and 400 height, and then you open a screen. And then if you want the other command side line, then you'll draw it. So it's almost like programming in basic, but you then can uh, gradually add functions to your program, and then add oil young objects, so a lot of art students they start by experimenting, so they call this model sketches. So what we can do by using the common profile for mobile and desktop computers is that we can use hardware acceleration in processing on um, smaller uh, portable devices, like uh, this is an arm that I'm holding my hand, so it, it got no fans, it's all silent, and uh, it's a, it's a, it's like it's the same kind of processor that you find in your common mobile phone in your pocket, but they attach a keyboard to it and a bit larger screen. So uh, what you see is as a, like like one sheet of paper of code. When you run it, um, you get so you can create some animations. For example, you can have have a Color cube moving with the mouse uh, cursor. Uh, so, th th what what I think it's uh, interesting to see is that uh, this code was uh, designed for desktop computers, but since they applied and kept on using the shared profile between OpenGL e ES2 and OpenGL2. Uh, because OpenGL ES2 is sort of a subset of OpenGL2. So, that, so by using this profile with the smile, uh, they can create code that runs both on this more embedded hardware and, uh, and using hardware exploration without any extra developers cost. And this uh, oh. running in the other window, a little larger datasets is then about some thousand, maybe 10, 18,000. Uh, uh, field cubes that's moving. So this is um, how you can use processing in combination with yoga to gain uh, hardware to and move to new hardware. So the big bunny, the 
video stuff you saw on mobile, so that should work too here. Yeah, oh, I've enabled debugging and all that stuff. So. <laughs> yeah. I guess show you one other big topic that one. Oh, right, right. Okay, so, so come, on, come here and then, okay. Okay, so just, you know, so this is the thing here yeah, an applet and deployment works as well. Great. So now. <laughs> um, okay, so um, maybe you know the company Nokia. Uh, they create mobile phones and they have a research team in Norway that create, created a Linux system called Migo. So that's not the only phone they released before they started using Windows Phone. So this is the only released Migo uh, product. And uh, we um, put it open UDK to it, and then we could run Jogging on it. So, without having access to uh, the Nokia code, we can start an Java application and then probe the system to uh, find the 3 acceleration drivers and start using them. So, so here we're running Jogging on a Migo phone. And uh, it's quite easy to do on Migo because um, you just open system preferences and then you can have a small latch that you move if you want to root your phone. So you can easily go into developer mode without uh, having to break any agreement with uh, Nokia. So it's, uh, this is really um, a device for thinkers that like to fiddle with things. You, you, you then when you open developer mode, you get the terminal for free, and yeah, you can start upload applications and start thinking with the device. So here we're running the gears with transparency across the user interface. Why don't get I any claps here? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> yeah, okay, so, so the that's second the part now, the interactive part. I guess uh, maybe you have, you may have questions what you have to what you've seen or whatever you want to do with DocAmp or, yeah, so go ahead. <laughs> so this is probably a Samsung tablet, <laughs> <laughs> and as you see, we uh, we have one here in our bag. It runs uh, GNU Linux kernel, and but there's another tablet we don't support, and we like yeah. So we only support the Apple products, which where they uh, you know where they make it available to program for on the JVM. So uh, as soon as uh, the dearest uh, Apple vendor decides to support the JVM, then it would be possible. Uh, yeah, but for sure it's on our beloved platform. Uh, it is a closed source platform like Windows, but it is possible on Windows. Uh, APIs are exposed, but not on, on the Apple. Sorry. Uh, there, the, there is a temporary, uh, temporary uh, solution. If you really want to support uh, iOS, iPhone or iPad, uh, you can use uh, Avium VM. Uh, or uh, XML VM, uh, it's a bit difficult because uh, with Avian VM you you have no uh, hardware support for float uh, float values, and uh, with uh, XML VM uh, you will have to go inside the code to repair some things to make it work, and you won't need to jailbreak anything. It will work without without a jailbreak, but it requires it requires uh, some some effort to to work. Uh, you you can use a gem, gem VM with a with a mid uh, Yeah. So if you go and jailbreak your device. Uh, you can install Yam VM from the CD installer and it will run, so you get a Java runtime environment using ClassPod and it should be quite straightforward to get uh, probably 
uh, many projects running because uh, under the hood the system looks like a regular computer. It's just that they try to hide it from you. So, like, this is a community effort. So, like, Apple products are well, they are lowest priority. And uh, if, uh, however, if if you make the port happen, uh, we won't say no. So that's, but I won't, uh, you know, spend my personal time uh, into hacking an iPhone. That's yeah. <laughs> So, so what we do is uh, we, we do support uh, that uh, OS X Coco thing, and even the latest, um, uh, yeah, questionable uh, API changes. So, which causes a lot of work for us. Uh, so that will be supported still. Uh, however, um, these closed devices are like not possible really to support. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I recommend you to take um, contact with the good um, Gregory's. He creates a product called Midpot, and he's actually running Java ME on the iPhone since I think 2008. Uh, so it's, it is possible to create Java bindings on on the, these uh, devices. Um, uh, I don't know. Maybe you know the library uh, LabGDX. Uh, it has a, it works on the, it uses Java and it works on a, on iOS it, but it uses a mono touch it, it, so you need you need a mono touch license to use a leg GDX but it works on, it should work on a, on iOS yeah and the, the meeting later right we we totally forgot that so um, you 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 already you're still here so afterwards if if we all want to join, like we want to have a dinner, then you know, you're more than welcome to join and we can chat and etc. etc. You know, uh, get in touch. Yeah. Sure, questions. Yeah. Um, for those of us that have written uh, a lot of Joggle 1 stuff, and well, if you look at website download stats, probably with millions of users of those stuff, uh, can you give us an idea of how painful it will be to move to Joggle 2? <laughs> uh, actually, uh, I printed a lot of stuff for free, uh, and uh, it's not very painful, it's more or less copy-paste, you modify some imports. Uh, the most difficult part is the, the threading sometimes, uh, because um, the context is available a bit later than in uh, Joggle 1, but Anyway, if you have a problem, you just drop me an email, or you, you phone me, or you you you, you go to our, our official forum, and I, we we fix that in hours or in, in days. But yeah. it, uh, there are, there's no show stoppers. It, sh it should be doable. Uh, you know, I port, I ported Java 3D in uh, four hours, so it's not that difficult. Uh, uh, even high-level APIs are very easy to port, except when they use deprecated classes, obscure classes, uh, you know, uh, these kind of classes that should not be publicly publicly exported or not publicly used. If you don't use this thing, it should work. And even in, in, in this case, we can find solution to work around, don't worry. <laughs> and uh, Xex has also uh, made a, a, let's say, a private port of NASA WordWind, so... Yeah, so basically what you do is you, you take um, some code editor that is competent, like um, you can take Eclipse, you can take uh, IntelliJ, uh, you load up the project and uh, you, you use the new yoga of yours, then um, you find all places, for example, where you want, where you create a GL object and you must say which profile you want. So uh, if you want to write Open gear free code. You say I want to open gear free profile, and this profile was not, I think, available even in in the old version. The old version only support open gear one point three. I remember. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, at least they all have only had one profile. So that's the every time where uh, you get the gear object, you must ask. Uh, you must tell which profile you want. That's the first step. The second step is uh, 
Um, yeah, the song, of course, we, we, can, we are not named Sun. So, all classes named Sun, you find under yogurt. So, you just need to rename and say, I, I want to use the uh, yoga uh, class. So, usually, I have a lot of help functions. And uh, so, mostly renaming work. And when I did uh, Whirlwind, um, of course, it was, it was a large patch, but it was really straightforward. When Eclipse uh, said you have no compilers, then it, I could launch it, and to my surprise, it, it popped up a globe over it. And uh, so, so uh, really, get rid of the compilers using a competent uh, editor, and it should work. And the and. Yeah, and, and the bottom line is that uh, so there's no more Drupal one support. So we, we support this ongoing effort, and um, you're welcome to ask your questions in our uh, uh, public communication channels, and we will help you. But what we don't do is um, you know maintain backward compatibility, etc., because um, that doesn't help uh, any of us. It's a hard decision, like other people. Um, you know, they have their product development problems with that, I understand this, but maybe you can appreciate the effort of unit tests and, and stability work uh, we put into the project, uh, which should uh, make you feel safer than using the old joggle, actually. Well, actually, what I want to know is how much of the old joggle code came through, because the reason our stuff works is because it got tested on so many different graphics cards and everything, and given that there is potentially millions of users of, of our stuff, like you go to the Cosmade.com website, right? That's our stuff running on the bottom of that. So I want to make sure that when I move, I'm still going to be able to deal with, you know, I mean the, okay, the, PC architectures and the millions of okay. graphics cards. So at the, <laughs> at the time of Struggle 1, uh, like as you said, it was tested on many graphics cards and it was working then. So that was a different time. So those graphic cards you can you cannot buy anymore. So this driver architecture doesn't exist anymore. Uh, for example, the fixed function pipeline today is emulated on every GPU. So no GPU is, is supporting fixed function pipeline. It's just a driver emulating, writing shaders on the fly, and creating VBO buffers, etc. So it is also a, a very recommended here that if you write any application using 3D acceleration, that you um, that you use the shader uh, language. Uh, don't use a fixed function pipeline anymore. Uh, tell, tell that to all the users running around on their EE PCs. They're I, not going <laughs> well, to okay. work. I'm just talking about the to, to today's graphic cards, today's GPUs, even those on the phones. All the demos you saw are shadow based. So none of them is fixed function pipeline. Um, yeah, right. There were a few. Okay. So, um, okay, so, uh, however, like, you, you cannot compare the, the bugs and stability with, with uh, 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 last year, like, uh, yesterday's GPUs and drivers and Joggle 1 and today. Like, that doesn't work. Um, so, even the drivers, bugs are introduced, etc. We have a hard time with AMD on X11, uh, maintaining the X11 display uh, uh, instance, etc. So, and these bugs are changing. So it, it's a world in flux. And um, like, uh, well, if you have your, your your museum with old hardware and Joggle One, you're you're living in a stable environment. That's okay, but that doesn't reflect today's situation anymore. So. Um, my recommendation is, if, if you have a business uh, interest into uh, uh, supporting certain hardware, uh, you can either contact us, uh, run the unit test yourself, like everything is available, uh, or we may set up a machine and connect it to our uh, Jenkins server, and etc. and so forth. So that is possible with us. Um, uh, one couple like Siemens in Germany did that with a Solaris machine. Uh, so they use it for, for, for their business application, and uh, yeah, so we can, we can manage. Uh, um, I still perform lots of tested on very, very old hardware, even, uh, you know, Matrox Millennium uh, J2, uh, 200, so very, very old hardware, and it's, it still well. Okay. I can confirm it. It still works even on open under OpenGL 1.1. 1 
Not OpenGL 1.0, I, I haven't found any uh, gra graphics card, it was too difficult to find one. But it, it, even, yeah. it even works on uh, all hardware, hardware uh, usually uh, uh, sold in uh, um, be before 2000. So, uh, uh, Jogger 2 in this domain, it, uh, it doesn't cause uh, regression, regressions. So, my, for example, my game is, uh, has been tested under AT, ATI uh, Radeon um, 9200, uh, so it's very old, it was sold in uh, 2004, and it's still working, it's still working flawlessly. Um, during this uh, past year, I've been working a lot with quality assurance of uh, the GeoGL2 from Yogyam to make sure uh, because this was the only solution that I can use on mobile devices, and the mobile devices are appearing more frequently today and desktop PCs. So I've been doing a lot of uh, QA to see that it runs on all these kind of devices, and we, uh, by doing this, uh, we now have, have a binding that actually can use today's hardware. Questions? Yes. So when are you going to accept my text render or pull request? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one. Eh? <laughs> well, oh, let me go back to one slide. SVT enhancement. So, but we fixed your buddy's uh, uh, SVT uh, uh, yeah, patch. Well, we, yeah, we, yeah. Yeah. Well, so at least, at least that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very good example of priorities. Very good. But also, well, you know, sometimes it takes years to get a patch in. Sometimes, not just, not just in Jordan. That's true. So our priority is, of course, like at the time being, when we when we actually were communicating about a, a, a updated uh, bitmap based, uh, like texture pre-rendered based text render, um, we were like in crunch time with our GPU renderer. So hence, like that, as we thought it, yesterday's solution was more like, uh, well, that's a slow priority. So we need to get our demos running with a new solution. Um, however, uh, we communicated, we uh, discussed that, uh, there were enhancements in the patch, which, which are great, um, and well, so uh, wow, we have to keep that going, <laughs> yes, so, so what, like the current state I guess is, um, so the namespace is now the same and we would need to set up at least a branch or something like after the critical release, I mean it's like very new, so even, even after, I forgot his name now, Andrew, Andrew when Andrew uh, gave me the, you know, and th there was still, like, it is not that mature as the old code, so we cannot guarantee that. Um, yeah, so we have to ensure that and then switch over. They've been beating it up pretty hard, it seems to be working. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, yeah, rendering yeah. thousands upon thousands of tests. So, why not adding more unit tests? What, what more unit tests do you want? <laughs> I don't know, okay. No, <laughs> no, okay then, okay, but good example. So we need more communication and then we have to finish it, yeah. But it's like uh, our community is not that big, so I'm usually uh, the janitor and uh, Wade is, uh, did a great janitor job in supporting Windows, uh, the, the Windows NT platform, which is now a good example of being agnostic and not really working anymore. Um, like we have, on some interesting graphics drivers, always problems, etc. And uh, okay, so time is limited. Need to get that, those things in. Uh, we would also appreciate people uh, uh, contributing more to the graph API and, and let's say completing our uh, curve rendering. So that would be much appreciated. Like we have our own, of course. Uh, but I yeah, I see. So okay, that's all it. Well. Yeah, no, of course we have to do that. More questions? I just want to know who I talked to about the SWT stuff. You, you did the SWT? Okay, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Yeah, like SWT, we have an, like, SW, like, as you know, the AWT GL uh, canvas. So SWT GL canvas uh, does not allow you to um, actually select the, um, 
the frame buffer configuration because it's already selected. Okay. Yeah, so I know that's why I, <laughs> a few days ago, I pushed that that new uh, Canvas SWT, like which is similar to to that uh, new Canvas uh, uh, AWT. So we use a native uh, window parenting. So you just attach a new window to that SWT element, and you're good. So then you can use uh, multi sampling, etc. If you like, I can show a few demos. Of the, they're all in the unit tests. Um, yeah, so other latest enhancements were uh, frame buffer objects, so the, the frame buffer objects class is now supporting uh, um, uh, MSAA, meaning um, that you use a, a read and write frame buffer and then actually, you know, you have your frame buffer sync uh, uh, for the multi-sampled uh, 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 yeah, result. Um, so that was a request from the processing guys, AC, Andres, etc. Uh, so that, that that's something we're working hard on to support, to keep OS X supported, uh, because they are the requirement that you no more use pbuffer, but FBOs. So, and, and all FBO work, uh, actually, which is now tran uh, transparent through the native window API, that was quite a, yeah, quite a burden, uh, because we have to create a dummy window and then, you know, and then somehow sneak in an FBO object. So, and then in the GL, uh, uh, hooks, uh, you know, when you set your frame buffer to default back, we actually have to set it to that uh, frame buffer object you're actually using. So that's working well. Um, still uh, have to add that to that uh, JORD uh, canvas thing for OS X. So that will happen uh, after CGRAF at home. And uh, yeah, so then OS X should, should be good again. Um, yeah. SVT, so again, SVT, well, use NUT and SWT and you're fine. Um, if you want a different solution, you're welcome to provide it to us. I will. I've got a, I did the original SWT port of Joggle 1, so oh. I, that's why I want to talk to you. Oh, cool. <laughs> I yeah. had the whole lot working at that point. So. Yeah. Yeah, like with that canvas, it's a chicken and egg problem. Like I don't actually know if, if you can tell me uh, in SWT how to sneak in a frame buffer configuration ID. Awesome. Yeah. But I don't know how to do that. Yeah. I'll pull some code up and have a look. So. <laughs> I can talk a little about um, uh, open, uh, how open source Java is doing today. Because uh, uh, Java programs, uh, many Java programmers believe that if you can speed up open EDK in the GVM, your application will just go faster and faster and faster. And we have reached a point where we do fast comp computational work, but as soon as you need to present it to a user, um, the standard, the toolkits we today have in uh, the standard base of Java, they cannot utilize uh, the, the graphics processor. So it's really good for servers, and that's why I started to approach the Jovian project, because uh, the Jovian project uh, had years on maintaining bindings to get access to the hardware acceleration. And this is something that's outside the standard Java toolkit. So uh, the idea is that uh, we could use Yoga, for example, to start accelerate old uh, 2D applications by, for example, um, starting to render swing applications on the GL canvas. And there exist uh, some projects around the Yoga community that are creating accelerated canvas that uses the latest primitives to really draw a graphics fast. So, so that's why I, I see uh, Jogan as a key technology to uh, maintain these bindings and make sh uh, and give, give your application a way to uh, access the hardware. Because uh, the hardware today uh, is so complex, so the only way you can reach the hardware is through the OpenGL uh, drivers using the Chrono specification. Okay. OpenCL and GL levels? Yeah. OpenCL, right, uh, OpenCL, very good, that, <laughs> that's the next bummer, so uh, where we lack maintenance, so that's coming up um, later too, so I will work on, on the JoCL and uh, maybe we can wait into, that would be awesome. Um, so when I read the OpenCL spec uh, a few months ago, uh, so the idea could be that we mimic that uh, C++ API, so we have to validate the current code base and the API binding. Uh, you know, and make it as much object-oriented as possible and simple. 
Um, yeah, and this will make it very similar to OpenGL uh, uh, ES, uh, which is sort of uh, object-oriented as well. Right? So, so you have to wait a few months to see that happen. Um, and the awesome thing, of course, is so next year's graph we will probably, and I'm kicking away, uh, we will probably see an OpenCL device, uh, maybe or may not, uh, from some vendors, uh, mobile, um, because they're working hard on it. And uh, yeah, so like like we had the uh, uh, Power VR and ARM and uh, Mali and uh, Tegra devices here uh, showing OpenGL, and all those vendors are working on OpenCL solution for mobile. Of course, this will not be for weather forecasts or any super number crunching thing, but maybe something like uh, Ant is working on, you know, making toys and games, and uh, so you have <laughs> so you have some physics. Uh, engine and interactive user interface, so which make the devices more fun to work with. Yeah. What, what version of Android is supported? Yeah, the, yeah. the minimum is 2.3, and that's because of uh, how the native window uh, handle is being exposed. And uh, for example, the video demo you saw. So that is actually using 4.03. Um, however, if it's not supported, so we query that at runtime, then you see our nice uh, test screen. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the texture. Yeah, yes, the point of it, it works fine with the latest Android 4, yeah. four versions as well. So, so this 3. Point, was it 2.3? That's what 2.3, that's the minimum. Android version, and then we then we support all the, all the higher versions. Yeah, so with two point three, you have even OpenGL as two, so that's fine. Yeah. So what? How many time? How much time do we have? We have left. Ten minutes only. Okay. So it's up to you. It's above. You know what POF means? It means questions and you know you interact with us, so we are all one of one thing <laughs> or something. Oh, and, here got, huh? and that's a very good aspect and it's actually reflecting the situation on mobile devices, SOC system on a ship, where you have a weak CPU which is uh, delegating the whole work uh, to the GPU, uh, you know, to the OpenCL engine. Uh, whatever you have, you know, all the heavy heavy lifters on your device are probably all uh, somehow combined on one chip, and uh, yeah, and you can see it yourself. Like you, you can have your Java controller program uh, taking the input and making a decision what's to do next, and then just delegating uh, the work to the to the horses. So. Uh, and if you see you see the, the evolution of OpenGL, like in the beginning with fixed function partner, you have lots of OpenGL uh, function calls to just create geometry. And right now you, uh, you you just assemble your data. Maybe you stream it via DMA um, through Java to your to your OpenGL device uh, GPU, and then you just issue a draw command with your shader program. So the amount of, of function calls is actually uh, very minimalistic. So the JVM uh, performance is, uh, yeah, doesn't matter here really. So what I'm showing right now on the tile is that I'm launching the standard X for the frame of the server that, uh, that is unactivated and it's running application and application. But these applications, they are quite slow at updating it because the CPU, the CPU itself has to go and paint anything uh, by hand. But uh, these gears that you see running, they are running from Java and it's going to be a library that it's really quick to paint stuff and really large areas. So, so even if the computer is, you can see down here, now it's not quite high load because of the extra environment, the gear still are taking off quite fine. So, so the idea of what is causing performance analysis is really upside down when you come to graphics. You do, you do not look at the real computer, that's usually how you feel these large screens. So where does the screen here? Hmm? Where do you have a gear go? 
Okay, uh, I think uh, it might be that uh, the green color became the alpha channel because the green here actually is here. If I put uh, it there, here, here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we we need to look into the green uh, So it's R I B, not R G B. The whole performance, so the motivation for for actually using OpenGL for rendering the user interface. So that's the same. That's that's the reason uh, because your your mobile etc. devices they don't have the CPU horsepower. So you want to offload everything, of course, to the GPU. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.